Today our topic is simplifying fractions. So our essential question is how can I use equivalent fractions and fractions in simplest form to solve real world problems involving statistics? First off, we have some key terms. Numerator is the top number, the top number of the fraction right there at the top. And it's the number of parts we have. So if we look at our pizza, we have one, two, three pieces of pizza. We have three pieces of pizza. The denominator is the number of total parts. We have three pieces of pizza, but there could have been a fourth piece right there, but it was already eaten. So left of the pizza, we have three out of the four pieces. That's what a fraction is. It's the number of parts we have versus the number of total pieces. Fractions in simplest form. We also call this reducing fractions. So if you see the word reduce your fraction or simplify your fraction, that just means the greatest common factor of the numerator and denominator is 1. So once the greatest common factor of the numerator and denominator is 1, that means it's in simplest form. If the greatest common factor is not 1, then it needs to be simplified or reduced. So let's simplify some fractions. We got fraction 6 over 8. So if we're going to simplify, we do need to find that greatest common factor. So remember, factors are numbers that multiply to the given number. So we have 6. What multiplies to 6? 1, 6, 2, 3. What multiplies to 8? 1, 8, and 2, and 4. So we have to find out what they have in common. What do they have in common? They have 1's in common and 2's in common. So that means our GCF equals 2. It's the greatest 1. So then to simplify, we're going to divide by that number. We're going to divide by our greatest common factor. 6 divided by 2 is 3, and 8 divided by 2 is 4. So once we do that, our fraction will be in simplest form. 3 over 4 is as simplified as we go. 28 over 35. 28, numbers that multiply to 28 would be 1 and 28, 2 and 14, and 4 and 7. That's it. And then the factors of 35 are 1 and 35 and 5 and 7. So if we look at what they have in common, they have 1 in common and they have 7 in common. So the greatest common factor would be 7. So we'll divide by 7 on the top, divide by 7 on the bottom, and we get 4 over 5. So that reduced to simplest form would be 4 fifths. 27 over 36. I'd like you to pause the video right now and give it a try. Just pause the video and then try that one on your own. And once you're ready, press play and you'll find out if you're right. Okay, so you pause the video, you tried it on your own, let's see what we got. Factors of 27 are 1 and 27, and 3 and 9. Factors of 36 are 1 and 36, 2 and 18, 3 and 12, 4 and 9, and the last one 6. 6 times itself gives us 36. Now let's see what they have in common. They have one in common, they have three in common, and they have nine in common. So the greatest one would be nine, so that's what we need to divide the top and bottom one. If we don't divide by the greatest common factor, it won't be reduced to the simplest form. So 27 divided by nine is three, and 36 divided by nine is four. So we have three fourths. So what I'd like to point out here is if you see this one is 3 fourths and this one is 3 fourths, which means that 6 eighths 
and 27 over 36 and 3 fourths we call equivalent fractions, which means they're the same amount. They just look different. So fractions can have the same amount, like 6 eighths and 3 fourths. It's exactly the same amount. It's just different numbers used to represent the amount, so equivalent fractions, all right? Now, as we go to the bottom, we are adding in some letters, which can get a little confusing, but don't let it, okay? So, 2x over 4xy. So, we're just going to start with the numbers. 2x, we have 1 and 2 for our factors. 4, we have 1 and 4 and 2 and 2. So, we're going to approach this a little differently. We still want that greatest common factor, which is 2. But over here, we're going to expand it. So, we're going to write it as multiplication. We're going to write 2 as 1 times 2. And then this is actually 2 times x. So, we're going to multiply that by x. So, that's our numerator. Then on the bottom, we want to use the 2s to make 4. We want to write 4 as 2 times 2 because that's the same thing as 4. And then we're multiplying it by 1x and 1y. So times x times y. Now when we write it like this, if you have the same number on the top and the same number on bottom, or the same letter on top and the same letter on bottom, you can cross them off. So here we have a 2 on the top and a 2 on the bottom. We have an x on the top and an x on the bottom. So we just cross them off. And then our answer is what's left. So what's left is a 1 on the top, a 2 on the bottom, and a y on the bottom. So we'd put 1 over 2y. So that's how we would simplify it with letters. So it's pretty similar, but a little different, okay? So let's try the second one together. 3ab squared, 12ac. So let's start by finding the greatest common factor of 3 and 12. So 3 is 1 times 3. 12, we have 1 times 12, 2 times 6, and 3 times 4. So we're going to use the 1 and the 3 and the 3 and the 4 because then they have the same number. We want the factors that have the same number, one of the same number. So we can write 3 as 1 times 3. Then we have an a, so we're going to write times a, times b squared. Now, if you remember our exponents lesson, that means we have two b's multiplied together. So it means b times b. Then in the denominator, we have 12, but remember we're going to rewrite that as 3 times 4. Then we have an a and a c, so we're going to do times a times c. Cross off the same on top and bottom, so 3 and 3, a and a. That's it. That's all we have the same. So we're going to write this as 1. And then we do want to re-simplify the b times b as b squared. And then the c and the 4 on the bottom, so we'll write 4c. So it would be 1b squared over 4c. I would like you to try this last problem. See what you come up with. Bring it to class. Make sure you put it in simplest form. And if you get the problem right, I will give you a piece of candy.